Hello everyone and welcome to the character rigging tutorial for Blender. This is going to be a very exciting tutorial for a lot of you guys because character rigging is probably one of the most popular types of rigging out there and obviously the one that a lot of people are interested in because they want to get their characters to move. And before you animate, of course, you have to make sure your characters can move because you can't just animate this one guy, you know, moving around. Now, if you want to get this guy, this is a character. Uh, named Archibald. He is a snowman that I created for the Blender Cloud Tune Tutorial Workflow. Uh, and you can actually check that out and download him for free on the Blender Cloud. So I recommend going there. And if you want to see the, t the entire Tune Tutorial, you'll get to see the full rigging process of this character with Rigify um, with a little bit more of an advanced face rig and stuff like that uh, on there with a subscription. But you can download him for free. The link should be in the description. And uh, let's just go ahead and get started. So character rigging is very interesting and actually pretty simple to do. Now we're going to do a few things here that involve uh, different add-ons and stuff like that. Now before we actually get started, we're going to have to turn on a certain add-on. So we're going to go ahead and go into our preferences and we're going to go ahead and hit Control alt u So that should bring up your preferences window. Go ahead and go to the add-on section. Uh, of the preferences and then search in this search bar here rigify and you'll notice that there is a rigify option that I already have checked but you want to make sure yours is checked and this will actually enable you to add what's called a meta rig so if we go ahead and go in here and uh, close that preferences window so now we can go ahead and hit shift a and add an armature and you'll notice in this armature menu there is the single bone like before but now there's three other options we have the human meta rig then we have the animals meta rig which is a sub menu with some pretty cool animals and that's pretty cool and then we also have a basic uh, meta rig and here we have the basic human meta rig and the basic quadruped now the human meta rig might seem tempting to use at first but if we actually uh, open that up you'll notice it's pretty complicated there's a lot of complicated facial structure bones in here that we don't actually need so I'm just gonna go ahead and undo that and and then uh, add the other one, the basic human meta rig. And that will give us, as you can see here, a very, very basic rig um, that has all the bones that we really need to create a humanoid character. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy in here and uh, Alt G to bring him in here. Um, before we do anything else, I'm going to move the, the rig to the Alt 1 layer just so we can get it out of the way and organize it a little bit better. Now, this is just good practice. I'm going to go ahead and take my character and move him up so that his feet are going to touch the origin just like the uh, the rig that we have here is. So I'm just going to move him up um, and uh, see how that fares. Uh, but I I should also scale him down, but I think it's fine as it is because I do want to kind of keep that scale at a uh, one by one by one. So uh, I'm just going to keep that there and then scale the rig up to be about where his shoulders match up. So. Where his shoulders match up is a good benchmark because sometimes the proportions are not exactly right. As you can see here with our character, he is a little bit exaggerated in terms of his proportions. He has a huge head um, and uh, such like that. But uh, this rig is going to require a little bit of editing. As you can see here, the the meta rig is in an A pose, whereas the, uh, the snowman is in a little bit more of a M pose. I don't know if I made up that letter or not, but it looks like an M pose because it's kind of like an A, but with a, you know, with a spread out legs and stuff like that. Usually A pose is just the arms are at a diagonal, but in here, um, we need to adjust anything that we can. So with, uh, with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and go into edit mode and we're just going to make sure that the X axis mirror is turned on. So we can turn that on and we have these bones. I'm going to go ahead and box select these, for example, and just move them. And we're going to move these joints so that they match up with the joints in our mesh. So this is assuming you've modeled your character or downloaded a model of your character that has these joints pretty much visible with these, uh, essentially this, these bunches of uh, vertices, these edge loops congregated here. Usually you need a lot of edge loops at joints. So if you have a good modeler who's accounting for that uh, deformation, you're going to want to have these joints with a bunch of edge loops. It's a good way to mark elbows and knees as well. But we're going to go ahead and bring these joints to the edges and by the way i'm using the circle select tool to get these uh points in here you don't have to do that but sometimes i like to do that because the bones are disconnected from each other for example if i disconnect that bone real quick there's actually a head and a tail two separate pieces so sometimes just to be safe i just use a circle select to move them both but um obviously this is supposed to be connected so i'm going to go ahead and connect them again with uh control p c for connected but that is uh Part of the process we're going to get this thing into the shoulder here and try to make sure and as you guys remember the 
base or the head of the tail determines the origin point or the rotation point of our uh, of our model. Now we don't really need these breast bones. I think we can delete them uh, because our character is male. Um, so you can choose to remove some of these if you like. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this one down here. This is, I believe, let's take a look at this. This is our pelvis bone. Uh, we'll move that down as well. But this is our hip, our spine bone. We have a pelvis and a spine, so we're going to want to bring these down to around here. Uh, this uh, spine bone, spine 01 bone, is a little bit uh, too low. So we're going to move that to be around there, I think think and just whatever feels right to you approximately where you want the spine to start deforming this here is the spine 03 so it looks like it's, it should be pretty evenly divided so we're just going to move that down like that and we actually have two neck bones here they're they're called spine 04 and spine 05 but they're basically neck bones and of course this uh spine 06 is actually the head bone so i'm going to go ahead and leave those neck bones in there but make sure that the they are very very small because it's going to be practically negligible but I want to leave them in there just in case. And then this is going to be, eh, let's just leave it up, like just like that. Make it pretty big so that we have that there. Um, actually, I do kind of want to delete these neck bones uh, because I don't think they're going to be necessary. Um, I want to see if that's going to be okay. Uh, should we connect these two? I don't think we have to, but we should make sure that these are parented. Uh, I'm going to pull it out first and see if there's a relationship line. There is, so it is parented just fine. Uh, and I'm just going to leave it like that. So once you have all the bones there, this meta rig is mostly just there to get, give you a head start for uh, getting all the bones that you need, as well as naming them properly. As you can see here, we have shin.l, thigh.l, thigh.r, thigh.shin.r. Uh, the dot .r, dot .l uh, suffix is very important for identifying how to mirror the bones. So if you guys ever have to rename bones, make sure you have that dot .l and dot .r in the name because that's how Blender detects which one is the left and which one is the right. So here we have a few extra bones that we probably don't need, like the toe bone and stuff like that. I do want that foot to still be there, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete the toe and this uh, this heel bone. We don't need that for him, but if your character does, then you should definitely keep that in there. Uh, if your character has toes, you should definitely keep that in there. Now, just a quick tip, a free little uh, tip for rigging. Make sure you keep the joints for the knees and elbows right outside of the mesh, right at the edge there, because that will make the deformation feel a lot nicer. As you guys can feel on your uh, elbows, they actually uh, have, the, the bone is basically right next to the skin because that joint is basically at the furthest point it can be uh, of your arm. A lot of people are tempted to put the joints directly in the middle of the flesh, like right here, uh, which actually causes a lot of strange stretching in the front where the knee is not supposed to move at all. So. That's just a good example of, uh, of good rigging practice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we take advantage of the um, snap to vertex tool. So I'm just gonna use the snap increment and change that to vertex. And changing it to vertex will actually allow us to snap to the, uh, to the base or the, the points of the, of the bones. And that will be really good for reference. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use the G and then the X axis to snap to the bone that way so that it's there in front of it and then use the GZ and then snap it, you know, vertically. So now it's a bit of a a bit of a flat foot, which is kind of is basically what I want. So I want to make sure that is flat so that it can deform pretty reasonably later on. Now that is pretty much it. I want to make sure that this elbow is, of course, as I said, right at the edge of the uh, of the joint there, right right at the uh, the outside of the mesh. And everything else looks okay. He looks a little bit like a chicken, which is. To be expected, that's kind of what we want, to be honest. Uh, and then we're going to have, uh, well, yeah, let's bring that shoulder up a little bit closer to the edge of that, just to get that deformation correct. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Of course, other joints like the thigh are going to be in the middle of the, of the mesh, in the middle of the meat there, because that's where the joint is in real life. And yeah, let's go ahead and go into edit mode. Go into object mode, sorry. And take a look at this guy. You obviously can't see the armature very well, but uh, only where it pokes out. But in wireframe, you can. You can see it just fine. Alternatively, you can also go to the display settings for the uh, for the armature and turn on X-ray. There we go. So now, in uh, even in textured mode or solid mode, you can still see the bones through that mesh. So what comes next in character rigging? Well, we have the rig. We have the rig. The next part is the weight painting. We have to make sure that this rig is driving different parts of the mesh. Well, it's actually pretty simple to do. Now that we have this rig ready, we can actually take the mesh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and take the body mesh first because that's one of the main things that we're worried about here and go ahead and select that first and I'm gonna parent it to the rig now parenting it to the rig is a very interesting process because we have the normal parenting which is just control P and then object or keep transform object and we talked about bone before with object rigging but this time we're actually going to use the armature deform option which gives you a few sub options which is the empty groups or the envelope weights or the automatic weights the empty groups is just going to fill out so if you go to the object click the object and then go to the vertex settings or the data the object data settings this will show you right under here the vertex groups the way Blender reads its bone weights is it simply takes the name of the vertex group, matches it with the bone, and takes the weight inside of that vertex group and applies and maps it to the bone. So it uses that naming convention of the vertex groups to map everything. So what's going to happen is when you parent this mesh with the armature deform modifier, you're actually going to create these vertex groups automatically. And it will also provide you with some automatic weight mapping if you so choose. So I'm going to go ahead and select the mesh again with the armature and then hit control P. And we have these options again. Well, the empty groups is just going to create those vertex groups without adding any weights inside of it. The envelope weights is not going to use the vertex groups at all, but rather just use the envelope deformation, which is just basically an average of the area around the bone. Uh, deforming the vertices that are within that area. It's not as good, but can get you can get away with some pretty simple stuff if you do it, you know, very hastily, or very quickly. Um, now the automatic weights. This is what we want to use. This is going to automatically assign weight values to the vertices around the bone in a ideally in a very organic way. So we're going to try it out. We're going to see how it looks like, and I'm going to show you what the weight map looks like afterwards, and we can edit it if we have to. Now, before I actually parent this mesh to the rig, I want to show you exactly what happens right now. As you can see, we have the rig poseable and it's working, but it's not actually deforming any part of the character because we haven't mapped it yet. So that's the important part that we're working on right now. Select the rig second, or I should say the rig last if you're selecting multiple parts. You can actually select, for example, the head and the hat and the scarf all at once and then select the rig and then hit control P and then hit, as we said earlier, automatic weights we're going to go and select automatic weights now and it should it should have created some automatic weight mapping that will allow us now if everything worked to move this character and as you can see there's a big difference we can actually move the arms of this character and the legs as well yes that's looking pretty good it's not bad it's got a little bit of a weird sort of caving in there but that's fine uh, as you can see here we have the uh, the pelvis bone there working this is the root bone we obviously don't have parts of it working yet the eyes and stuff like that are not fully mapped let's go ahead and map those real quick that's going to be with object uh, rigging because we don't really need the weight maps to be there since it's just going to be a one for one so I'm just gonna do uh, control P and then bone which is uh, you know you don't have to use automatic uh, armature to form for everything and as you can see here now everything follows ex oh except for the uh, I missed a part there except for these parts right here and then control P and then B for bone and that should do it as you can see here we have the face working okay the scarf is deforming quite well actually um, the hat is moving along with it the automatic weight mapping works pretty well there's a few things that we might want to change for example the shoulder deformation here it looks okay, but it's, we got some clipping issues. Um, and uh, what I'm most worried about is this little caving in here, which is not desirable. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the weight map looks like. And as you can see here, if we go into the uh, weight painting mode, after you select the mesh, go ahead and hit control tab, just like pose mode, but with the mesh selected, it will give you the weight painting mode. So I can actually go into uh, wireframe mode for this to see it a little bit better. And you can select different vertex groups in the object data tab. So you can select the spine, spinal one, spinal two. You can see there's pretty minimal there. Uh, spinal three, spinal six. Um, that's actually the head. And of course, you can you can go ahead and select this guy as well to get his weights as well. We can go ahead and select. I believe it's spine oh six. There we go. That's the head. And so we can uh, we can just see how the weights work that way. We can also instead of clicking these manually. We can also go ahead and select the armature, go into pose mode, make sure each bone is selectable, go back and select the mesh, and then you'll notice the pose mode 
selection actually doesn't go away. So what you can do is while you have the mesh selected, you can actually select the bones as well as long as it's in pose mode and selecting it will show you the corresponding vertex group and the weights, which is really, really handy. So that is a great way to edit the weights as well if you just have them selected. Now you can actually edit them. So let's go ahead and actually try to weight paint them. So if we go into the T tab here, the tools, we actually can see there's a weight option here. This can be adjusted. I'm gonna bring it down to zero because what we want is for this thing not to cave in anymore. So we're just gonna go ahead and paint that. Oh, look at that, it's not working. So if this ever happens to you, you'll notice that the, uh, the weight painting doesn't actually seem to work for whatever reason. Check your settings, make sure the strength is at one. But there's also another culprit, which is mirror modifiers. A lot of characters have mirror modifiers on them. And what that'll do is that'll mirror the mesh over and it'll also mirror the vertex groups, which is great for rigging, but um, it will only allow you to weight paint the side that exists. So just to show you, if we go into edit mode, this is the mirror modifier applied to a mesh that only has vertices really on the right side, his right side. And um, if we try to paint on the left side, it won't work. So what we want to do is we want to go to, instead of thigh.l, we want to go to thigh.r. And now we should be able to paint it and it'll apply to both, as you can see here. There we go. So I can just paint a weight of zero along here and it's it's going to be you know if you want to make these adjustments you're going to have to be a little bit patient but so as you can see it's kind of caving in a little bit more extremely instead of gradually so i kind of want to get rid of even more of that let's see how that works out um there we go let's see how that works out that's a lot better that is a lot better so it looks a lot more natural now maybe we can get rid of this as well um that's not too bad so once we get that done it'll actually already mirror to the other side so as you can see here because of the mirror modifier, we have a great, easy to use left and right side immediately. So there's a few stray weights here I have saw moving around, stray, stray vertices being affected. So I just wanted to, yes, yeah, so as you can see here, you can see a little bit of the uh, the mesh moving here. So I'm just gonna paint that with a, with a weight of zero. As you can see, there's a lot less movement now. Um, yeah, so that's basically how to weight paint with automatic weights first as a base for your character. The meta rig is very easy to use. It's natively installed with every Blender install. So you just go ahead and download Blender and you'll already have the meta rig available as long as you turn on Rigify. And then uh, once you use the automatic weights, you have those weights to play around with. You can use the weight painting uh, tool to actually change the weights a little bit and adjust it a little bit. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a usable character rig. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll go more into the advanced rigging stuff for how to constrain these bones in a way that makes it easier for you to animate. But the basics here are already there. And I hope you guys learned something.